Hi, and welcome to the Senator Chuck Allen EduPod. I'm Eric Joppe, recording artist and auction committee member, and we're very excited about the Contemporary Art Auction in 2010, benefiting the Senator Chuck Allen Scholarship Fund. Several works have been generously donated by noted galleries and artists for two live auctions. The Memorial Scholarship Fund will aid students of color in Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York studying accounting, law, urban policy, and public administration. These students will serve in the public realm just as Chuck Allen did. He served in Connecticut politics for over 26 years and died February of 08 after a long battle with cancer. I now like to invite you to a conversation with Latoya Ruby Frazier, accomplished photographer, whose works will be offered in our benefit auction, and artist consultant fund chair Todd Roulet as they discuss the new museum exhibit photographs of Latoya Ruby Frazier. from my understanding of photo, um, art, photo, history. So, you know, the intimacy, intimacy that's there and this um, negotiation that my mother has for me to take such an image like this, which most kids would never take an image of their mother yeah. like this, kind of goes in along with Sally Mann's ability to be able to photograph her children new. Mm -hmm. Or even um, this The dynamic switch in terms of... Right. But I'm aware of that, mm -hmm. you know, so if Sally Mann was the mother photographing her children, here I am, the child, photographing my mother. When normally your mother is telling you to, you know, make sure my lipstick is right. I mean, I'm, you know, to every, you know, every, I guess, person, every child or grandchild is always being directed by their mother or grandmother to wait until I've got my blouse right, and wait until the lipstick is, and mm -hmm. now you can shoot. So I'm interested in telling me about how your mother invites, you know, an outsider, as it were, um, into this relationship and how that's negotiated, like you said, because um, emotional investment, you know, between your mother and yourself in this long relationship of collaborating and then having, you know, someone like her, her partner come in and there's an emotional I mean, there's obviously some rapport um, between yourself and, and whoever she's involved in. Right. Um, well, this is Mr. Art, and they have had an ongoing relationship for several years mm -hmm. back and forth. Um, so he also gets used to it. Mm -hmm. And it's it's known, okay, this is what me and my mother do when mm -hmm. I come home. This is what we're doing. And if you are there, you're going to be a participant. Okay. It kind of just becomes that way. Uh, there's and there was always this absence of the male figure in my work because my real father's not there. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up with the rest of my siblings because my grandmother raised me. So uh, it became important for me as an artist building this body of work to start to indicate mm -hmm. uh, the male, whether it's one of my mother's friends or if it's her boyfriend. Uh, they're just as much as part of the atmosphere and the dynamic of our relationship. So that's a, that was a conscientious decision. Yes. And um, she loved him and, you know, she wanted a photograph yeah. with him. But, you know, in our negotiation, we're going to make a real photograph, you know. Um, and I had took some other photographs that she kept for herself. But we were still making work because uh, he certainly impacts the way that she feels psychologically about herself and emotionally about herself. 
and they've had a really, you know, highs and lows in their relationship, and I had been witness to that, and I've always been witness to all the men that my mother has dated, and it's um, a very important aspect of the work because one of the main reasons why she wanted me to start to photograph her was so I would start to understand this is who she was then and this is who she is now. And and yet this is the only, this is her only significant partner that we see. Now you that see right? Mr. Yerby, who I've known for several years now myself. Uh, but he was there since the last seven years we've been making the work, so he has indicated a few that, times. That Mr. Art. Mr. Art is. And then Mr. Yerby also comes in and out as one of her friends. But the thing is, my mother has been a battered woman by men. So my childhood experience and views of her, even though I never seen them hit on her, I would see the end result of it. Mm -hmm. You know, whether she's in the hospital or whether she is choosing to go through another cycle of using drugs again. Um, and your grandmother pulling you away from that, more or less, or no? Well, I was always placed with my grandmother so I wouldn't get caught in the crossfire mm -hmm. of it. But eventually I got older and was seeking a relationship with her regardless of her addiction. So for me, um, you know, so it goes from my grandmother coming out of the 20s. My mother was born in the 50s. You know, probably really grew up as a teenager in the 60s, and then here I am in the 80s. So this generational cycle it's a very that was happening, times that are... there was just this disconnection, and I always felt displaced because they wouldn't tell me certain things, and it was as if I was just supposed to take their cues and be the same. But it didn't work for me in my generation because yeah, you don't tolerate control. that. Yeah. Like I don't believe in tolerating being complacent or being abused or being quiet and only being in the household. Like, I didn't believe in this. Those weren't my core values.